Uh, yeah, that just happened. Hey, everybody. Yeah, that's right. I was hit. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy I was uh, taking my kids to school today which I usually don't, don't do actually usually my wife does but she had um, trouble sleeping last night so I volunteered I was volunteered <laughs> to take them to school so I take my kids to school, no problem. Driving home. And I was making a left onto a kind of an expressway. So I was taking a left and somebody was at the red light taking a right. I guess they decided that everything was clear and poof, they hit me. Luckily, nobody got hurt. I'm grateful my kids weren't in the car and I decided you know I'm not gonna let that stop this day <laughs> uh, I actually called the insurance company at the scene just to file the claim get it all ready to go got all the information in uh, went back home told my wife the situation and I said you know what I'm still gonna go so where am I going I'm going to uh, Santa Cruz. Haven't been there in a while. I've been thinking about Santa Cruz. I'm not sure why I like to go there. It's a beautiful place. It was exactly one year ago today, we were heading off to my dad's house to um, be with him at the final stages of his life. I remember going to Santa Cruz a couple times before I went to see him, so I figure what a good time to go. Another reason why I'm going to Santa Cruz is where I live in Santa Clara, it's going to be 93 degrees Fahrenheit. I looked this up, by the way, for, all, for those of you who don't use <laughs> Fahrenheit. It's, uh, let's see if I got this number right. Yeah, 34 Celsius. Is that hot? I know some people live in hot areas, so maybe it's not that hot, but to me, it's very hot. And when I looked at the weather in Santa Cruz, it was going to be uh, 69 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's 20 degrees Celsius. So that's another reason why <laughs> I'm going. I usually share my driving trip to Santa Cruz, but I think I have like three or four of those already, so I don't think you need to see it. So with the power of video editing, I'm just gonna snap my fingers and we're gonna be in Santa Cruz. You ready? We made it. The drive was pretty smooth, no accidents. <laughs> And it is cool here. Yeah, this is not the day to work on uh, Dong Song's No Hot, No Cold. Do you know that koan? Somebody asked Zen Master Dong Song, uh, when hot and cold come, how do we avoid them? Uh, Dong Song replied, well, why don't you go to the place where there's no hot and no cold? And the student asks, well, what is the place that has no hot, no cold? <laughs> and Dong Sang replied, when hot comes, hot kills you. When cold come, cold kills you. Yeah, not today. Not only is it a cool day, it's a kind of a foggy 
cloudy day. Definitely a lot of fog way over there by the lighthouse. The sun in the sky shines everywhere. Why then does a cloud obscure it? Let's see if there's uh, any announcements. Um, let's see, uh, not, so one week from Saturday, so about a week and a half, uh, my family and I are going to Oregon. Go visit my dad's partner and stay there for a couple weeks. We're gonna celebrate, I was gonna say my dad's death, but I guess celebrate his life. Uh, he passed on June 6th and then his birthday is on the 14th, so we're also going to celebrate uh, his birthday. So um, I'm going to do some live streaming from Oregon this time. I know I always say that, but I think this time I am. Uh, I'll definitely capture some footage there. As you know, it's probably the most beautiful place I've ever been to, at least on the west coast of America. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Oh, my friend, uh, Will Cabot Zen. So some of you know I'm trying to start this interview series. I got the software now. Thanks, Helena, by the way, again and again. <laughs> um, so I talked to Will the other day on the phone. Most of it was just catching up. I haven't talked to him probably since um, 2012 or 13. I know I'm, when I moved to Providence Zen Center, we got kind of fell out of touch. So anyways, we caught up. Um, it was really good to reconnect with him. I'm definitely gonna have him on as a guest. He definitely wants to do it and wants to share some teaching with us all. So that's very exciting, I'm happy about that. I'm not sure what else is going on, but I'm sure there's something going on. <laughs> uh, again, I wanna thank the Patreon community for making all of this happen. Uh, if it wasn't for your support, I would not be here today, in fact. So let's take a stroll. I don't think I've taken you on this journey. We're gonna take a stroll down the boardwalk and uh, see what that's like. Is it called the boardwalk or the wharf? One of the two, you'll see it pretty soon. What? Dogs prohibited on wharf? Aw oh, man, that's discrimination. Hanging around all day. Hmm, dolphin takeout. I hope that's not on the menu. I actually remember this place very well. So it was also uh, about exactly one year ago, we had a, a long time family friend uh, pass away. Uh, it was a shock. He was maybe five years older than me, something like that. Um, but I remember uh, when I lived in the Providence Zen Center, I would fly into the San Jose airport and my friend, his name's Mikey, he would pick me up and then take me to the coast sometimes. So sometimes we would stop by Santa Cruz and this is one of the places we would eat at. So, wow, a lot of coming and going, you know. That's really windy here. Actually getting cold, huh? Avoid the heat. <laughs> when cold come, cold kills you.
yeah, I think it's time to eat. So here we are. This uh, last weekend, I led a three-day hybrid retreat at the Empty Gate Zen Center in Berkeley. And what that means is we had some people in Berkeley sitting, about four or five of us, I was there. We had some people sitting at a center in Boise, and then many more people joining us online. But it's interesting to hear people's experiences of the retreat. So usually at the end, we have a circle talk. So everybody goes around and they can share some experience or experiences that they had. So it's always either the retreat was very easy and they really enjoyed it, or the retreat was very difficult. And I'm curious, was the retreat easy or difficult? So that reminds me of a story. There was a layman named Layman Payne. Now, if you haven't heard of him, go look him up on the Google there. <laughs> Very interesting person. Uh, he was known to be um, an enlightened person. And, but the interesting thing about him is that he wasn't a monk. He was a lay person. In fact, he had a family. And not only did he have the family, but supposedly everybody in his family uh, realized enlightenment. So once someone came to Layman uh, Peng and said, I want to know, uh, is the Zen practice easy or difficult? And Layman Peng said, ooh, it's very difficult. In fact, it's like trying to take a stick and hitting the moon. <laughs> so the man was very discouraged, right? So he thought, well, his wife is enlightened. I'm going to ask her. So he asked the wife, is Zen practice easy or is it difficult? And she said, it's very easy. It's like touching your nose when you're washing your face in the morning. <laughs> so then he's really confused. Like, wow, he said it was difficult. She said it was easy. I'm going to go ask the son. So uh, he asked the son, is Zen easy or is it difficult? And the son said, not easy, not difficult. The blades of a hundred grasses has the true patriarch's meaning. And he's like, huh? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> now this man is very confused. So he went to the daughter who was the youngest in the family and asked her, is Zen easy or difficult? And she said, don't make difficult, don't make easy. Just let go of all of your thinking, then everything is just truth. So how are you keeping your mind right now? Right? And this man was stunned. <laughs> So she took a stick and hit him, boom. <laughs> and then he was like, cool. Oh. And then she said, where is easy and difficult now? Right? And then this man realized something. So not only in retreat, in our lives, we're always making something. So I always talk about um, not painting legs on a snake. That means there's the truth. And then there's what we add on to the truth. Do we make it good? Do we make it bad? Do we make it easy? Do we make it difficult? When we cloud the truth, then we can't connect to the moment. So we end up causing a lot of problems for ourselves and others. And I was just thinking about this man today who hit the car. And I was really upset, right? I was like, are you serious? Because when I was turning, I just, I saw him. And I said, man, that better not hit me. And I kind of see him getting closer. And so I kind of tried to get out of the way and boom he hit it and I was very upset like what are you doing the anger was inside but it, it wasn't really controlling me for some reason like I, I really felt it and I said what's going on with you <laughs> but then I saw something interesting I looked into his eyes and he had fear in his eyes he could see that I was very very angry and so that kind of changed uh, my perspective a little bit taking a step back and like oh man this man's probably uh, really bummed out right now that he hit my car. And then when I looked at um, his license plate, I noticed the tags. There's like stickers on, I don't know what they have in the rest of the world, but we have little stickers on the license plate for registration. And I saw that his registration for the car was expired. So I'm like, oh, I don't know this guy's situation or what's going on with him. And it was, um, it allowed me to have more uh, compassion for him and the situation. Even though inside I was still upset, and also we still had to make it clear what happened and taking care of the situation as it was appearing. So our Zen practice is actually quite simple. 
Layman Ping's daughter said it. Don't make difficult, don't make easy, don't make any kind of opposites thinking. Because when we can see truth just as it is, our relationship is completely different to what's happening. I say this many times, most of the time we can't control what appears, but we, can, we have some say in about our relationship to what's appearing. So if we just perceive the moment without making anything, adding anything to it, then we can, there's many more possibilities on how we can respond to the world with more love and compassion. Those are my thoughts for the day. As usual, go ahead and leave some comments below if you wish, and I will see you soon.